Hey friend, this is Jerry G and I'm Mama Ronang friend. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I will be creating a tutorial content because I'm done with the process. I'm going to be creating a tutorial content so that I can help my students at the same time with my students. At the same time, I'm going to be able to master my accounting concepts. Actually, I'm going to be able to Uh, by the way, disclaimer lang, hindi pa po ako si PA. So anything na sasabihin ko sa, or ituturo ko ay uh, based naman sa understanding ko during my review days even during my other vlog at saka self-study. So if may napansin kayo na mali sa nasa-concept na, na, ng masabi ko, aba nagmamarunong pa kayo sa nagmamarunong yung friend? Dahil joke lang, feel free to comment kung ano yung mga bagay o yung mga concept ko na mali ako. Um, akin lang, let's help each other, let's help every accounting students and even aspiring CPAs in achieving their dreams to become a CPA or to become a certified public accountant. So if you're interested, keep on watching. So ang topic na i-discuss ko ngayon ay statement of cash flow. At alam naman natin na ang statement of cash flow ay isa sa financial statements na pinipipare at pinipresent ni accountant kapag year end. At alam naman din natin na ang cash ang pinakagamit na asset sa operation ng isang company. So kung titingnan mo ang balanse, kung gusto mong malaman ang balanse ng cash mo, ang titingnan mo ay yung statement of financial position or balance sheet. Pero kung gusto mo naman malaman kung saan ginamit, paano bumaba, paano tumaas ang cash balances mo, ang titingnan mo ay ang statement of cash flow. Kasi sa statement of cash flow, doon pinapakita kung saan activity siya ginamit, saan activity siya ng galing, at paano ka naka-arrive sa ganitong balance ng ending balance ng cash mo. Pero alamin na muna natin ang statement of cash flow by its definition. Sabi niya dito, it provides information about an entity's cash receipts and cash payments for the period of which the financial statements are presented. So sa statement of cash flow, makikita mo yung mga natanggap mong pera at mga ginastusan ng pera mo. Pangalawa, it summarizes the sources and uses of cash and cash equivalents. So, ganun na nga. Sabi ko, sa statement of cash flow, maipipres o mapapakita kung ano yung activity na pinanggamitan mo ng cash at anong activity yung nag, ano yung activity na pinasok mo para magkaroon ka ng cash. ba diba? At hindi lang cash, pati cash equivalents. Ano nga ba itong cash equivalents? Sabi, niya, ang, sabi nila ang cash equivalents daw ay highly liquid investments. Ibig sabihin, pwede mo siyang makonvert agad sa cash nang hindi, nang walang masyadong hassle sa part ng isang company. And usually, yung maturity nito is less than or equal to 3 months. So part siya, may papakita siya sa statement of cash flow yung cash and cash equivalents. And syempre sa statement of cash flow, meron tayong classification ng cash flow mo. Big sabihin, ang classification, ito lang yung mga activities na pwedeng panggamitan o panggalingan ng pera mo. Pwede siya sa operating, pwede siya sa investing, at pwede siya sa financing. So mamaya, i-discuss ko yan ng detalye. So ano nga ba ang format ng statement of cash flow? So ito yan, yung cash flow from operating activities plus or minus the cash flow from investing activities plus or minus the cash flow from financing activities. So kapag pinag-add mo yan o pinagsama-sama mo sila, ang tawag natin dyan ay total net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalent. Tapos kapag dinagdag mo ang beginning balance ng cash, 
Diyan papasok ang ending balance ng cash At itong cash ending balance Ito yung makikita mo sa statement of financial position Yan lamang yung amount na yan So hindi mo talaga makikita dyan Kung saan ginamit yung pera O kung saan galing yung pera Kumbaga sa statement of cash flow Na ipapakita natin yung breakdowns Ng pera Na pang ginamitan mo O pinanggalingan ng pera mo So next naman is yung classification ng cash flow. Ano na, ano na nga yun? Yung una is the operating activities. From the word operating, ibig sabihin related siya sa operation. So ano sabi niya dito? It's the principal revenue producing activities of the entity. So ano nga ba yung mga principal revenue producing? Yung mga activity na makakaproduce ng kita sa isang kumpanya. Siyempre yung pagbili mo ng inventory mo. At yung pagbenta mo ng inventory mo Ano pa, yung collection mo Ng pera sa customer mo Mga revenue produce So anything na related mismo Sa operation mo Ano pa dito sabi niya In other activities that are not investing Or financing activities So kung hindi mo maklasify isang transaction Na merong cash na involved Pwede mo siyang ipasok sa operating activities ano naman itong direct method or indirect method? So itong direct method or indirect method, ito yung way of presentation mo ng operating activities. So under the direct method, lahat lamang ng cash, ah, lahat lamang na transaction na involve yung cash, yun lamang ipipresent mo. Halimbawa, collections from customers or payments for merchandise. So yun lang yun. Ano naman yung indirect method? So, ang indirect method naman, magsisimula ka sa net income and alam naman natin na yung, yung net income na babasehan mo ay galing sa statement of comprehensive income. At yung statement of comprehensive income, ang gamit mo dyan na basis is accrual basis. And since this is a cash flow, big sabihin, cash basis tayo, so, kailangan mong i-convert ang net income na galing sa accrual basis into net income to cash basis. So, mamaya, i-detalye natin yan. And only the operating activities are allowed to present direct method or indirect method. Kasi yung next two direct method lang ang yan. Next activity is the investing activity. Ang under the investing activity, sabi niya dito, these are activities of the entity that relate to acquisition sa pagbili and disposal sa pagbenta ng long-lived assets. Ano ba yung long-lived assets? Usually, nasa property, plant, and equipment to. And other, non-current assets, including investments. Ano ba yun? Investment property, yung mga... FBOCI, yan, mga ganyan. Basta asset siya. Ang investing activities, naka-focus mainly sa long-term assets. Okay? And sabi dito, direct method only. Big sabihin, yung ipipresent mo under, yung ipipresent mong transaction under investing activities ay yung mga transaction lamang na mayroong cash na involved. Ano halimbawa nun? Yung pagbili mo ng equipment through cash. Present mo yun. Pero yung pagbili mo ng equipment kapalit ng shares, hindi mo siya ipipresent sa investing activities. I mean, hindi mo siya totally ipipresent sa statement of cash flow. Okay? Ang next natin is investi ay financing activities. Sabi niya, these are the activities that result in changes and compensation of the equity, capital, and borrowings of the entity. So, ito naman, more, mas, more on ano siya, liabilities and owner's equity. ba diba? So, katulad ng investing, ipipresent mo lamang ang financing activities using the direct method. And alam naman natin na ang direct method, ipipresent mo lang ang transaction kapag merong cash na involve Anong example nito? Nag-acquire ka ng bank loan through cash. 
So, itong tatlong activities na to, ito lamang yung mga activity na pinanggalingan o panggagamitan ng pera mo during the operation of the company. So, mamay, ipapakita ko yung format ng presentation. Umpisa natin sa investing, sunod sa financing, ilas na natin yung operating kasi nga dalawang method siya medyo mahaba. So, sa investing activities, ayan yon Proceeds from disposal of property, plant, and equipment. Proceeds from disposal of debt inverse instruments of other entities. Proceeds from the sale of equity instruments of other entities. Take note yung other entities kasi kapag own, own debt instruments mo yan, papasok yan sa financing. And syempre, hindi lamang proceeds but also the purchase of property plant, equipment, acquisition, and so on and so on. So, focus tayo dito sa purchase of equity instruments of other entities. Unless FBPL investment or considered as cash equivalents. Alam naman natin ang equity instruments meron yung tat dalawang kategory. That is FBOCI at FBPL. Pwede mo siyang i-measure yon through FBPI or FBPL or FBOCI. So kung FBPL daw yung pag-measure mo ng investment mo, papasok yan sa operating activities. Or kapag yung equity instrument mo na consider siya as cash equivalent, so papasok din yan sa operating activities mo. Ibig sabihin kasi kapag na consider mo siya as cash equivalent, hindi na siya long term. And alam naman natin ang investing activities asset or long-term assets ang focus nito. Okay? So, ano, alam, ano na nga ang cash equivalence? Ito yung highly liquid investments na ang maturity ay less than or equal to 3 months. Okay? So, yan yung format ng investing activities. Next naman tayo sa financing activities. Proceeds from issuance of share capital. Proceeds from issuing debt instruments. Proceeds from bank borrowings. Payments of dividends to shareholders, repayment of principal portion of debt, including finance lease, and repayment of bank borrowings. So kung nalilito kayo sa investing at financing, tandaan nyo lamang yung accounting equation. Yung asset is equals to liabilities plus owner's equity. Yung asset portion, investing yan. Basta long term. Yung owner's equity at yung yung owner's equity at liabilities, financing activities yan. At take note ulit, ang financing at investing activities, direct method only ang pwedeng gamitin upon presentation. So, proceed na tayo sa operating activities. Di ba ang operating activities meron siyang direct method at indirect method? So, ano na nga yung direct method? Ito lang may mga transaksyon na merong cash na involved. So, ano-ano yun? Under operating activities. Collection of customers. Interest and dividends received. Proceeds from sale. So, ano-ano yung mga transaksyon na yun? Under direct method of operating activities. Collection from customers. Interest in dividends received. Proceeds from sale of equity investment measured through PFBPL. So, yun na yung sinabi ko kanina. Bakit siya na-consider sa operating activities? Kasi nga, ang FBPL, ang reason nito, bibenta mo siya. Parang buy and sell yung purpose nito. Yung security na to. Ibig sabihin, dahil buy and sell, parang revenue producing activity siya. Kaya under siya ng operating activities. And other operating cash inflows. Sabi ko rin nga kanina sa definition niya, kapag hindi mo siya matrace kung financing siya or investing, pero may cash na involved, ipasok mo sa operating activities. And of course, yung payment of merchandise, payment for expense, payment for income tax, payment to acquire equity investments through FBPL, and other operating cash outflows. So, yan yung presentation ng operating activities under direct method. Ito naman sa indirect method. Kung mapapansin nyo, walang cash na involved. 
nagsimula tayo sa net income. And sabi ko nga kanina, magsisimula tayo sa net income under accrual basis. And i-convert natin siya into cash basis. So, paano natin siya ma-convert? Tatanggalin natin yung mga items na nasa baba niya kasi wala yung cash na involved. Okay? And mamaya i-discuss ko yung details. And we will arrive at the cash flow from operating activities. Take note also na dapat either method dapat yung cash flow from operating activities under direct method and under indirect method must be equal. Okay? So, dapat equal sila. Kasi, throughout your operations, pera ang binasihan natin. So, kung an, magkano yung pera na ginastos mo o natanggap mo during dire, sa direct method, ganun din dapat yung indirect method mo. Kasi isang pera lang naman yun na pinanggamitan o pinag, um, pinagkuhaan ng pera. So, yun na, i-detalye natin ang indirect method. Sabi ko, ang indirect method, nagsimula siya sa net income under accrual basis. So, paano natin siya mako-convert into cash basis? Tatanggalin natin yung mga items na walang cash na involve and ikakategorize natin itong ta- mga items na nasa baba ng net income into three categories. Unang-una, yung non-cash revenues and non-cash expenses, ko consider natin sila as non-cash items. 'Di ba? From the word non-cash, 'di ba ang kailangan natin is map- mapakita yung pera na pinanggamitan o pinanggalingan ng pera. So tanggalin mo yung mga non-cash items. Ano yung mga example ng non-cash revenues? Ito yung unrealized gain on unrealized gain on changes in the fair value or unrealized loss on the changes of fair value of the investment. So tanggalin mo yon. Bakit natin binawas ang revenue? Kasi pinataas niya ang cash ay pinataas niya ang net income pero walang cash na involved. Remember yung rule sa indirect method, gagalaw yung net income kasi gumalaw yung cash. Ulitin ko yung rule sa indirect method para hindi ka mawala kung bakit natin tinatanggal yung mga, yung mga transaction o yung items na walang cash na involved. Kasi ang rule dito, gumalaw yung net income kasi merong cash na involved. Yun yung rule diba sa cash basis? Okay. So, kaya tinanggal natin yung non-cash revenues. Ganun naman, dahil sa non-cash expenses, dinagdag natin siya. Kasi nga, binawasan nyo yung net income, pero wala namang cash na involved. Okay? Next naman is yung gains on sale and loss on sale of investment or property plan equipment. Tawag natin dyan is non-operating items. Big sabihin, They are items na incidental lamang sa operation mo. Hindi mo siya araw-araw ginagawa. Hindi rin siya nagpo-produce. Doon nagproduce siya ng revenue pero hindi siya principal revenue producing activity. Kaya tanggalin natin siya sa operating activities. Siyempre yung gains, napataas na yung net income kahit walang cash na involved. At yung loss naman, napabawas na yung net income kahit walang cash na involved. So ang gawin mo, para matanggal yung gain, ibawas mo. Para mabalik yung loss, idagdag mo. Okay? So that's that's it. <clears throat> and the last one is yung increases and decreases in current asset and current liabilities. Tatawagin natin siyang changes in working capital. So itong mga pagbabago sa working capital, naapektuhan niya ito yung yung net income mo under accrual basis. At dahil naapektuhan yung net income pero wala namang cash na nabawas o walang cash na involved, kailangan mo siyang tanggalin. So anong rule sa changes in working capital? Tandaan nyo to kapag current asset, opposite effect. So kapag tumaas ang current asset, ano ba ka example ng current asset? Receivables. Kapag tumaas ang receivables, ibawas mo siya sa net income. Sa current liabilities naman, <clears throat> direct. So kapag tumaas, ano ba example ng current liab? That is accounts payable. Kapag tumaas ang accounts payable, idagdag mo siya sa net income. Bakit? Dito papasok 
ang accruals and deferrals. Ano nga ba itong accruals and deferrals? Accruals and accruals, yung income na earned mo na pero wala ka pang perang na re-receive. At yung expenses na gastos mo na o nagamit mo na pero wala ka pang binabayad na pera. Oh, remember, di ba confusing siya? Remember sa... <coughs> Sa rule natin under indirect method, gumalaw yung net income kasi gumalaw din yung pera. O dito sa accrual, gumalaw yung income kahit wala ka pang pera na tatanggap. Or naggumalaw yung net gumalaw yung expenses, syempre gumalaw expenses, magagalaw ang net income pero wala pa ring perang gumalaw. So, kailangan mo siyang tanggalin. Ano naman itong deferrals? Ang deferrals naman, tumanggap ka ng pera. Pero hindi mo pa siya na-earn At gumastos ka Binayaran mo na yung expenses Pero hindi mo pa siya nagagastos Ano naman ang gumalaw dito? Gumalaw yung pera Pero hindi gumalaw yung net income Remember the rule Gumalaw ang net income Kasi gumalaw ang pera Or gumalaw yung pera So kailangan gumalaw din yung net income Okay? So example tayo Ano nga bang entry kapag mayroon tayong accrued income? Debit receivables Credit income Kung mapapansin nyo Walang cash na Involved Pero nag credit ka ng income So ang rule Gagalaw ang income Kasi gumalaw ang cash At dahil walang cash na involved Tanggalin mo Kasi nga ang basis ng net income Is cash Kapag may cash ka natanggap Income agad yon. Kapag meron kang ginastos na ginastos sa na expense o lumabas naglabas ka ng pera automatic expense agad yon okay so dahil nga receivable siya at ano ang receivable current asset ano ang rule kapag current asset opposite effect sa net income so yun yung reason kung bakit opposite siya unearned income naman ang entry debit cash Credit and earned income Kung mapapansin nyo sa journal entry Nadagdagan yung cash mo Pero hindi gumalaw ang net income So anong gagawin mo? I-adjust mo ang net income Kasi may natanggap ka ng pera eh So analysis Unearned income Current liabilities At dahil current liabilities siya ang effect niya Direct effect on net income So kaya i-add natin Kasi nga meron ka nang natanggap na cash So Pagalawin mo ang net income, dagdagan mo siya. Okay? So, yun yung reason, yun yung why, yun yung rason kung bakit um, ganun yung, yung current asset direct, ay opposite siya, yung current liabilities direct effect siya sa net income. Okay? So, yun yung yun yung tatlong items na kailangan mong i-consider upon using indirect method in presentation or in presenting the operating activities the non-cash items the non-operating activities or the non-operating items and the changes in working capital so kailangan mo siyang tanggalin para maka-arrive sa cash basis net income So, meron naman tayong mga special considerations sa statement of cash flow. Ano-ano itong mga items na to? Ibig sabihin, itong mga special, itong mga items na is, I mean, pwede mo siyang i-present in either activities basta consistent ka lang sa pag-apply every year. Ba kung in-apply mo siya sa ganitong activity, I-apply mo siya next next year sa ganitong activity. Hindi mo siya babago-bago yan. So ano-ano yung mga items na yon? Unang-una, yung dividend receive. Pwede mo siyang i-present sa operating kung silent yung problem or sa investing. Next is the dividend paid. Pwede mo siya i-present into financing kung silent yung problem or operating. Next is the interest received. Pwede mo siya i-present sa operating kung silent yung problem or investing. And lastly, the interest paid. Pwede mo siyang i-present sa operating if silent 
or financing kung sinabi sa problem. Usually, financing siya And ano pang mga dapat mong i-consider upon preparing, preparing for upon preparation of statement of cash flow? May mga transaction o may isang transaction na pwede mo i-classify into two activities. Example, cash payments toward repayment of a bank loan. Nagbayad ka ng utang sa banko. Siyempre, kapag nagbayad ka, hindi lamang principal ang babayaran mo, mayroon ding interest. So, yung principal portion ng utang mo, consider siya as financing. Pero yung interest, yung pagbayad mo ng interest, consider siya as operating. So, that's it. I hope na meron kayong natutunan sa statement of cash flow. And that's it. I hope na nakatulog sa inyo yung tutorial content ko regarding sa statement cash flow. So if you find this video helpful, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And please like and share this video para marami pang accounting students at aspiring students na matuto sa statement of cash flows na aking discuss kanina lang. So thank you and see you on my next video.